We're so glad to see you today. Let's get started on the topic, which is, this is part two, demons, evil spirits, the occult, and talking to the dead. In the last program, we discovered that the dead are asleep. And we also discovered that there had been a tremendous war in heaven. The Bible says the war between Satan and Christ and billions and billions of spirits. Now, I want you to take your Bible and come over here to Isaiah chapter 14 because today we're talking about Satan or the devil. Isaiah chapter 14 and verses 12 and onwards. Look at this text, would you please? It says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend of the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. This is talking about the great arch rebel. The King James Version calls him Lucifer. In other translations, he is called the day star, the bright star, the shining one. Of whom does that sound? The bright one, the shining one, the magnificent one. This is the one who set out to be like Christ. This is the Antichrist. And if you were to see him, he would not be as most churches have taught. They've taught that he is an awful looking monster. Come over with me now to the book of Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel 28 and verses 12 and onwards. Ezekiel 28 and verse 12. 12 and onwards. It's talking here about the king of Tyre, but behind the king of Tyre was an evil spirit, the great rebel, the great arch rebel. Ezekiel 28 verse 12, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom. What does it say? Perfect in beauty, the shining one. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. So he is a created being. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. He was perfect, perfect. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of fiery stones. Stood in presence of God, not a monster, beautiful in every way, almost, but not, almost like Christ, beauty, great dazzling personality. The Bible says he walked up and down in the midst of the burning coals and the very throne of God. The Bible tells me that he lusted for more power because for him uh, might was right. Now come over here to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're talking here about the shining one. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and uh, verse 14. The apostle Paul says, no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an Angel of light. Now, the great Roman Catholic Church and some of the great Protestant churches have pictured him like this. 
stoking the fires of hell where the damned are. That in itself is a lie because there is not a single soul in hell tonight. That is a lie from the devil. And so people have been taught he is like this. When the Bible teaches he is full of majesty and he is full of beauty and he has a tremendous ability to persuade and to deceive. And that is why today he is so successful in Christian America because this person is the original con artist, shrewd, the shining one, and he deals in lies, deception, seduction, uh, and then in the end, uh, he deals in force. Is it not amazing that Christian people should try to follow him because this is the torturer in chief? And they say, it's all right to torture because we're the goodies. This is the great torturer. and This is the Antichrist. But if he came into this meeting today, many of us would fall down and worship him. Mm -hmm. He's not like the paintings that were done by the church in the Middle Ages. That's nonsense. An evil spirit, lying spirit, deceived the king of Israel as he deceives millions today in Christian America. Come over here to 1 Samuel 28. Now, this is a long passage, and uh, because I've got a lot of things to tell you, we've got to go fast. 1 Samuel 28, verses 3 and onwards. Now, Samuel had died, so what did Samuel know? Nothing. And all Israel had lamented for him and buried him in Ramah, his own city, and Saul had put the mediums and the spiritists out of the land. Then the Philistines gathered together and came and encamped at Shunem. So Saul gathered all Israel together, and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid. His heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Find me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, In fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes, and he went, and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, please conduct a sea ants for me. That's what they're saying tonight, today, in America and in England. Conduct a sea ants for me and bring up for me the one I shall name to you. Then the woman said to him, look, you know what Saul has done, how he's cut off the mediums and the spirits from the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. The woman spoke to Saul and said, Why have you deceived me? For you are Saul. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. Do not... Now he's stuttering. What did you see? The woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. So he said to her, what is his form? And he said, an old man is coming up and he is covered uh, with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel and he stooped with his face to the ground, bowed down. Now Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Christians say they come down from heaven. But this person's coming up. And Saul answered, I'm deeply distressed for the Philistines make war against me and God has departed from me and does not answer me anymore, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I've called you that you may reveal to me what I should do. Then Samuel said, so why do you ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy? The Bible says the prophet was dead 
And as the prophet was dead, the prophet did not know a single thing. And in modern theology, when a prophet dies, he goes up to heaven. But this thing came from the bowels of the earth. This was not the real prophet, but a deceiving demon, maybe Rosevar himself. And so there are millions in this country and in Latin America and around the world like the Church of England minister in England who said, Bishop Pike, he said, I spoke to my dead son, said the bishop. Hmm. The power of Lucifer and his army of evil spirits is manifested in many ways. It is manifested in Hinduism. Pastor Harold Harker and I went to the Taj, but we went behind the Taj to the riverbank, and we went there to a Hindu temple. The Hindus worship millions of gods, and these gods are actually in the form of demons. Have you seen them? I have. And Harold said, do you want to go in? I said, I don't know. (laughs) He said, let's go. So we went in, and the priest struck the gong and invited the spirits to come. I said, Harold, we're not going to go any further because the hair. It came up on our necks. We felt the presence of evil spirits in the Hindu temple. It is manifested in prayers for the dead. One great church teaches people, pray for the dead. You don't pray for the dead, you pray for the living. In Mexico, they have the day of the dead. It is based on the devil's lie that you'll become as gods and you'll know everything. You read this in scripture. The power of Lucifer and his army of evil spirits is manifested in the new age movement with all their spirits and all of their souls. It is manifested in the ascended masters. Have you heard of this? Mm -hmm. I went was running a big campaign in the city of Melbourne. Some people came to me and they said, come to our home, we beg you. They said, we have been sent by the spirits of God to ask you to come and join us. They said, we can see that you have something around you. And uh, I was visiting them out in the Dandenong Ranges and they said, if you do not come and visit us, we will leave our bodies and we will come and visit you. And they said, as an evidence that we have the truth, here are your sermons that you're going to preach for the next three months. And there they were, word for word, every illustration. Mm -hmm. This was in Australia, the ascended masters. It is manifested in the popular cult of astrology. As you can read in Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 13 and 14. Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 13 and 14. Isaiah says, you are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers, the star gazers and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from what shall come upon you. Behold, they shall be as stubble the fire shall burn them they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame it shall not be a coal to be warmed by nor a fire to sit by the bible says astrology is a part of the occult hitler was into astrology as are many of the leaders of this country It has entered, I'm not saying the present administration, I don't think it is true, but a recent administration, before they did anything, they consulted the astrologers. The Bible says uh, it is a part of demonism and the occult. And then, of course, Lucifer and his army of evil spirits is manifested in the sea answers where people go along and they have a medium. 
and the medium will bring up the dead. And the dead will tell the loved ones exactly what they need to know, that information that nobody else knows. And that is why the woman came to me in Sydney and said, it must be right because I heard things from this person and he was my husband that only he and I could possibly know. We are dealing with the shining one, the person who if he manifested himself today would be shrewd and polished and persuasive. And the vast gullible masses bow down and say, this is the great power of God. It is the power of the devil. So how can you be fortified? By reading the Bible, by studying the Bible. Most Christians just don't read their Bibles. It is manifested in demon possession. Have I seen it? Yes. Dr. John Hammond and I went along to see a lady who came to my meeting. She lived in a a town north of Sydney with the quaint name of Woi Woi. Uh, John had been involved. He'd seen these things before out in the islands, brought up in Borneo. Dr. Hammond and I went in there. As soon as we went into that house, the hair came up on the back of my neck. No, you don't laugh. You don't laugh. There's nobody laughing then. Nobody's joking then. The lady came out, the children were cowering in the corner of the room, about four or five little children. She said, I once knew the truth. I once followed the truth. But she said, somehow, uh, I had a very messy experience. And she said, I I got away from church. I, I got away from God. And she said, I consulted the spirits. Now, you don't have to believe this. Just be careful what you don't believe. She said, every night I get into bed, a man gets in with me. And he's no human being. And he puts his hands around my throat. She said, look at the marks. I could see them there. The kids were crying, shaking. I said, let's all get down. John and I got down, Dr. Hammond. Started to read the Bible. As I started to read the words of the Bible, you know what happened? She went into a trance. Couldn't hear a word. We'd shake her, say, listen to the prayer. We're reading the scriptures. All right, I'm with you now. Start to read the Bible. She couldn't hear a thing. (sighs) Don't dabble with the devil. Don't play with the devil. Because he's alive and well on planet Earth. Now listen, I'm going to tell you something. It's not to scare you. You and I know things are going on in this great country that we never dreamed would happen. We're concerned about what's going on in the world. People say, what's going to happen next? Listen to this. Listen to this. We are living in the last days. I have an abundance of evidence that we are living three minutes to midnight And evil angels are going to come from the bottomless pit and deceive billions. The gullible masses who know nothing of Scripture, who are so easily persuaded by politicians and others. Oh, it sounds so... Come on, please. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Come over here to Revelation. I don't have time to give you an exegesis of this. But the quick exegesis I'm going to give you is held by the best scholars. Revelation 9, 1 to 3, then the fifth angel sounded. And I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came up out of the earth and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth had power. Jesus said the scorpions are symbolic of evil spirits. Verse 7. 
The shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold. And their faces were like the faces of man. So they have human faces. They had hair like women's hair. They're seductive. And their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions and there were stings in their tails. Listen to me, I've got to tell you fast. Another part of this chapter when it describes these demons from the bottomless pit that eventually take over the whole world with the exception of a little remnant have the faces of men, the human. They have the hair of women, seductive. Another verse in the same chapter that we won't read just now says, their power is in their mouths. False preaching, false utterance. They spew out all of the seductive teaching and the people say, this is the power of God. But the Bible says, the sting is in the tail. They deceive with the mouth and then they sting to death. Evil spirits. Revelation 16 says the last great battle, Armageddon, is brought about by the agency of unclean spirits. What should you and I do? We should wake up. Hmm. It's no longer business as normal, my friends. We need to wake up and we need to come to Christ and not be superficial but to study scripture. The good news is that Jesus is Lord over the forces of nature and Lord over the demons. Now, we don't have time to read the text, but there's a text in the Bible where it talks about Jesus was out in a boat (laughs) and a tremendous storm came up. They thought they were going to sink. And then Jesus said, what's wrong? Jesus got up. He turned to the raging sea and to the scream of the elements and he said, peace. Hmm. There was. He's the Lord of all. Lord over the demons. Lord over the elements. Lord over the devil. Beat him on the cross. Then they landed and there was a man who came out of the tombs and he was filled with demons. People say, no, no, that doesn't happen. It's just a story. No, it's true. Don't mess with the devil because he won't mess with you. And Jesus said, I'm going to save you. The demon said, if you're going to cast us out, throw us into these pigs. Good place for them to go. Jesus said, go into the pigs. And the pigs rushed down the bank into the sea. They were drowned. And the man was left completely healed because I want you to know this. When the little gods come out, the big God comes in. Mm -hmm. And when the big God comes in, the little gods go out. I've had Christians say, but you know, you can have the devil and Christ. No, no, you, you can't. When Christ comes into your life, you are safe and you are saved. Because Christ is Lord over the elements. He's Lord over the wind. He's Lord over the waves. Uh, He's Lord. I want you to see this. You've got to make a choice one day between Christ and this person. He doesn't look like a demon. He's handsome. He's sharp. He's suave. He's persuasive and he deceives uh, the wandering multitudes. And you can't mess around with this because one day it's going to be Christ or Satan. And we should say today, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart today. As it is written in scripture, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. 
He's Lord over the elements, Lord over the sea, and he's Lord over the demons. We believe we're living in the last moments in the history of this world. And we believe that the demons are coming out of the bottomless pit. And we believe our only safety is in knowing Christ, not just knowing about Christ, not just knowing a heap of stuff about religion, but knowing Christ and having the word of Christ indwell us. As we're praying here today, how many will raise a hand and say, today I choose in the great controversy, I choose Christ. Would you raise your hand today? I choose Christ today. Dear Father, bless these upraised hands and bless these upraised hearts and we thank you that with Christ we are eternally safe. We worship you and we bless you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. когда Джон Картер впервые приехал в Украину. Об этом говорил весь Киев, писали все средства массовой информации. Джон Картер остается актуальным проповедником, и молодежь Украины нуждается в его опыте и в той вести, которую он несет. Когда я узнала, что он приедет в Киев, я и мои друзья, мы очень ожидали его проповеди. Проповедь меня удивила. И я знала многие эти истины, но эта проповедь напомнила мне, то, что на самом деле важно. Работая с молодежью, я сегодня осознаю и понимаю, что это самая сложная работа, которая может быть. И для того, чтобы сегодня благовествовать современной молодежи, то сегодня нам нужна не просто доктрина, сегодня нам нужна сила Божья. Служение Джона Картера, которое он совершал, было ознаменовано большим влиянием Духа Божьего и большой силой. И именно в этой силе сегодня нуждаемся мы. Наше украинское суспильство а також и церковь переживает сегодня непростые часы. Мы переживаем разнообразные кризы, но самое наибольшее – это духовная криза, которая торкнулася всех верст населения, але самое наибольшее – она торкнулася молодого поколения. Тому молодежная программа, которая планируется этого года осень, она должна, мы надеемся, на это стать ответом на те духовные потребы молодого поколения и подарить им надежду на светлое майбутнє. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.